We should do a top 10 movies of the last decade. Better yet, we should just do a reaction to watch Mojo's top 10 best movies of the last decade. Oh yeah, that's way easier. That's way easier. That's way and easier. people would rather watch that for some reason. And I like debating over their list. Mm-hmm. You're a master debater. Always divisive, what they gotta say. This is a top reward tier video request from uh, patron Eric Horstman. Let's watch this. Ooh. Decades come and go, but the movies are forever. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best movies of the decade. It's only the second week of the summer, and there's already been a dead fish in the pool. We were doing an experiment. We were trying to get it back alive. For this list, we're taking a look at movies released from 2010. I hope I've seen all these. <laughs> that will not only be remembered as classics in the years to come, but also served to define the decade. Since this was especially difficult to narrow down, we're leaving off animated Is it? Pages. What? Between Toy Story 3 and what? The to the hell with your list. I would have put a, both of those on there. Number 10, Avengers Endgame. Given this franchise's widespread impact and universal That's number one. Decade, <laughs> this list would not be complete without at least one entry from the MCU. I am inevitable. Black Panther proved that superhero movies have the power to break barriers and break into the best picture race. But if we have to single out one movie that epitomized why this cinematic universe is a cinematic achievement, it would have to be Avengers Endgame. Perfectly said. Major credit to how you said that. <laughs> That's exactly right. If you do this, and it doesn't work, you're not coming back. It's actually a pep talk, Christian. For over 10 years, we watched the Infinity Saga unfold. And this tour de force marked its epic culmination. Avengers! Assemble. Finding just the right balance to hold and new, the film brings everything full circle with laughs, tears, and thunderous applause. As the credits roll, it doesn't feel like you've merely watched a movie. It feels like an important milestone. Yeah. Never mind. Arrival. The 2010s are going right. to be a breakout decade for director Denise. It's a good movie. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking about this film. I like woke up thinking about it. It's like thinking about communication. When some spacecraft arrive on Earth, it's up to one linguist to decipher the reason. Dr. this is really the right approach. Try to teach him how to speak and read. That's gotta take longer. You're wrong. Faster. The film keeps the audience guessing until the very end, which is every bit as poignant and inspiring as one would hope. Sorry, no future. In a decade where immigration and cultural divide were among the most prevalent topics, Arrival is an absorbing parable that demonstrates the importance of communication and listening to others. Mm -hmm. Number eight, Django That's Unchained. so cool. <laughs> For three decades, Quentin Tarantino has remained one of the industry's most distinctive and exhilarating voices. Among the three films he made during the 2010s, Django Unchained was arguably his most audacious outing, as well as his most fun. His name is Django. He's a free man. He can ride when he pleases. Like a master mm -hmm. chef, Tarantino combines several ingredients that most people wouldn't dare put into one pot. With Tarantino adding his own special seasoning, though, it comes out as a perfect fusion of different tastes. What do you like about your acting business? Can your white folks and I pay you for it? It's not to like. The film is an outrageous satire, not unlike Blazing Saddles, a black exploitation flick, not unlike Shaft, and a spaghetti western, not unlike, well, the 1966 film Django. It's also an effective buddy picture with Jamie Foxx and Christoph Waltz creating the most memorable Western duo this side of Butch and Sunday. It is a pretty great film. Number seven, mm -hmm. Hereditary. This decade was a horror renaissance, but no other movie disturbed us to the core quite like Hereditary. Uh, what about Get Out? <laughs> a supernatural horror drama such as this easily could have come out in the late 60s or 70s. Drawing parallels to classics like Rosemary's Baby, The Exorcist, and The Omen. It's hard to breathe. What do you mean? I think my throat's getting bigger. At the same time, Hereditary still feels like a product of the 2010s, touching upon mental health and trauma with a modern sensibility. You tried to kill me. I love you. Why did you try to kill me? Tony Gillette's Germany is a woman who's either being torn apart by a 
start by an evil presence or the madness within. Whereas so many other horror films literally jump out at the audience, director Ari Aster lures us in with tense foreshadowing and subtle scares, leaving us completely unprepared when insanity takes over. Number 6. The Wolf of Wall Street Oh wow, what a list. Set in the it's 80s a controversial 90s, pick. The story of Jordan Belfort feels all too relevant in today's world. We live in an era where big business reigns supreme. Fugazi. It's capitalism, it's America. What do you expect? <laughs> Even in this market, is that I never ask my clients to judge me on my winners. I ask them to judge me on my losers because I have so few. Instead, Martin Scorsese's electrifying biopic focuses on how a Wall Street mogul sold his soul in exchange for the American dream. A fancy mansion, luxury vehicles, yeah. and so much cash you could drown in it. Yeah, that's awesome. Bribe a federal officer. No, technically I didn't bribe anybody. Oh, no, that technically that's no, 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 no. According to the U.S. criminal code, there needs to be an exact dollar figure for an exchange of services that would not hold up in a court of law. You yeah, can go no. I heard it. In other words, <laughs> reading in the American dream has become one and the same. Leonardo oh. DiCaprio portrays Belfort as a con artist who's beyond despicable, yet so charming we'd still probably buy his pants. And so Never many mind. influencers in love quoting him on Instagram. Nolan I on that, know. The 2010s <laughs> solidified his status as a master of filmmaking. Wes Bentley's in this movie. Yep. <laughs> Every <laughs> clip I see, I'm reminded of that fact. I totally forgot. Yep. But Inception opened our minds to bold new ideas. Now, more than ever, Hollywood seems reliant on established properties to pack theaters. Only use details on a, I mean, a street lamp or a phone booth, never entire areas. Why not? Because building a dream from your memory is the easiest way to lose your grasp on what's real and what is a dream. Is that what happened to you? Inception mm -hmm. stood out as an anomaly. An original standalone story that not only excited us, but also challenged the audience to think. We need you there to tell a compound specific to our needs, which are great depth, a dream within a dream. People always say I look like him. You do. You look exactly like him. I don't know which one to shoot. <laughs> We've all heard the phrase, a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. Well, Inception is a heist thriller wrapped in a sci-fi extravaganza inside an enigma. Film that triggers the imagination and still invites analysis mm. ten years later. In short, this is the stuff the dreams are made. Did it fall or not? Moonlight. Man. Moonlight signified a major shift in Hollywood, both for indie filmmaking and representation. La La Land deserved it. Gandhi schools to pick on you every day. The word not this meaningful drama. In the early 21st century, and for good reason. Whereas many movies are obvious in how they address race, gender, and sexuality, though nothing is ever spelled out in Moonlight. Yeah, you trying to get smart with me, huh? This best picture winning drama requires its audience to look closer, Shit. making them see that there are multiple sides to every human being. A drug dealer can actually be an affectionate father figure. A juvenile delinquent can actually be a scared little boy trying to survive in an unaccepting world. Everyone is forced to fit the mold they were born into. Through love and understanding, however, our protagonist may come to embrace his true identity. Number three, Mad Max Fury Road. In today's blockbuster landscape, Damn. audiences are used to seeing movies with excessive CGI, overly complicated plots, and repetitive action. It's good to get something straightforward, but bastic when practical. <laughs> Fury Road was the complete opposite, emphasizing practical effects and stunts, keeping the story as simple as possible, and putting so much thought into the composition of the action that individual stills could hang in a museum. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. While not exactly a sequel or a reboot, Fury Road takes the best aspects from George Miller's previous Mad Max films and pushes them into overdrive. Three times the gates were open to me. What gates? I was awaited in the lab. They were calling my name. The best way to describe the film is the climactic chase of the road warrior sustained for two hours. Although that sounds incredibly straightforward, the film's emotive characters inventive production values, and high-octane direction set a new standard for the genre. You know hope is a mistake. God, Max. If you can't fix what's broken, you'll, uh, you'll go instead. Number two, mm. Get Out. Mm -hmm. Hereditary may have been scarier, but Get Out challenged preconceived notions about horror and film. It's by no means the first movie to blend horror with dark comedy and satire, but 
Get Out made us think about current racial and social tensions in ways we never anticipated. I'm not racist. Way, I've seen Get Out like three times. I would have voted for Obama for a third, term. For a third term if I could. Best president of my lifetime. Hands <laughs> 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 in heights rarely seen within the genre. And this all came from the mind of a former Mad TV cast member. Sink into the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sink. Sounds relaxing. While writer director Jordan Peele has always been a great talent, the 2010s saw him emerge as one of the decade's defining voices. You'll be able to see him here what your body is doing, but your existence will be as a passenger. Seamlessly mixing homage with original concepts, Peele should remain every bit as prominent in the 2020s and beyond. But for now, his debut feature is his magnum opus. I mean, I told you not to go in the house. So, how many of these amazing Aww, movies did you see? Aww, Grand Budapest. Did you see theater? Do you have any idea what we slotted in at number one? Or at least what year it's from? All right, let's run through some options. Joker? And then we'll Obvious. Obviously. <laughs> Joker. <laughs> What would the number one movie be? The Departed. That's not 2000. No. I'm still in high school. Did you just throw my cat out the window? The images you're turning in? Aw. They're cool. You're looking at things in a really unique way. You got a lot of natural talent. Thanks. Yeah. That 50 cents will just get you a cup of coffee in this old world. <laughs> Parasite is pretty great. Yeah, from all the movies I've seen so far, I think this should win Best Picture for the ones that are nominated. Oh, I don't know all the noms yet, but I would love a Parasite win. George Washington Bridge. Really? You throw yourself up the Brooklyn Bridge for this one. Oh, would it be a Coen Brothers? Would it be like No Country or something? What was it, a dumbbell? What do you do? I do many, many things. I am a writer, a doctor, a nuclear physicist, a theoretical philosopher. A nuclear physicist. But above all, I am a man. Hopelessly inquisitive man, just like you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Ooh, you have, you have me at the edge of my seat. I don't know which one it's gonna be. You have to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. Oh, is it going to be John Wick? Make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. The Revenant? Number one, the social network. When the social network hit theaters, Facebook was still a relatively new phenomenon. Jump ahead ten years, and it's impossible to imagine the world without this social media platform. Hey, Cameron, I'm still a little skeptical that we have enough functionality in the site to really draw the attention of getting the critical mass necessary to get a site like this to run. Together, director David Fincher and writer Aaron Sorkin shaped the story of Mark Zuckerberg into a modern Shakespearean hmm. drama. You don't think I deserve your attention? I think if your clients want to sit on my shoulders and call themselves tall, they have the right to give it a try. There's no requirement that I enjoy sitting here listening to people lie. You have part of my attention. You have the minimum amount. The question is whether this is a story of triumph <laughs> or tragedy. It's hard to say since Facebook's story is far from over. For now, though, this film depicts a legendary origin story that was relevant in 2010 and remains very much a part of the zeitgeist of 2019. Drop the gun. Just Facebook. It's cool. Expertly crafted, brilliantly written, flawlessly acted, and timely while also being timeless, we can't think of a better film to hmm. represent the past decade of cinema. Welcome to Facebook. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip huh. of Watch Mojo. And be sure to subscribe huh. and ring the bell to I, I see your videos. argument. Yeah. I see your reasoning. Mm hmm I respect it. A million percent wrong. Oh, it's The Last Jedi. This is the best film of the 2010s, John, obviously. Let's not do this. Everyone fails to recognize the Ghostbusters remake. <laughs> this is an interesting list to talk about. I really wish Watch Mojo would sometimes tell you what their criteria is. Yes. To qualify. It's like there are some movies that I would say here are certainly like Django Unchained is definitely one of my favorite movies of the decade. Mm. And I get their argument for social network. These lists are so polarizing uh, because <laughs> it's so impossible to narrow it down. 
Because you're going to say the best movies of the decade, and which is a very difficult list to assemble, even though it doesn't really make that much of a difference. It's just good to specify. This is your opinion. This is just, this is completely subjective. Yeah. I think and, it'll help your comments out a lot. <laughs> yeah, because I yeah. would say, you know, for if we make a list, I would say top 10 favorite movies of the last decade and really specify that. And there's none of these here that I'm like, terrible, shouldn't be on here, you know? Like, I, I get why anyone would put this on their top 10 of the decade. What they said about Endgame is exactly why Endgame is my favorite movie out of the MCU. I personally prefer Irishman over Wolf of Wall Street, but that's just me. I prefer a few other 2010 Scorsese flicks over the Wolf yeah. of Wall Street. <laughs> the thing that, that I did like about this list is that I think a good decade list ought to reflect what's going on in culture at the time as well as just the quality movies and True. the hype movies and the enjoyable True. movies. And I felt like that was arguably what maybe got a more debatable pick like Wolf of Wall Street onto this list because mm -hmm. there's still, like you pointed out, a number of people who idolized Jordan Belfort even though he is a despicable guy. Yeah, they idolized the DiCaprio <laughs> yeah, version of yeah, Jordan exactly. Belfort, yeah. <laughs> and that's an interesting thing to note about movies like that. And it's a part of the double-edged sword of movies hey. like those. Yeah, that's true. I don't ag entirely agree with the interstellar thing. I think there's a lot they did visually that makes it unique and different. The Matrix and Dark City explored a lot of very similar things in live action, I thought, already. Wait, anyway. you, mean, you mean Inception? Yeah, what did I say? Interstellar. No, I mean Interstellar. <laughs> Inception, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Out of a decade, you could fill this with uh, a whole bunch of films mm -hmm. that I think matter. And yeah, they tried being as diverse as possible. Mm -hmm. Put Moonlight on here, they did put Get Out. I think 12 Years a Slave is another great one to pick. Mm -hmm. Personally, my favorite movie out of the 2010s was the 2011 independent action art house flick. Drive. Ooh. Anyone who knows me knows how much I love that film. It really struck a chord with me. There's a lot of art house action that seems to have been heavily influenced by that film. Oh, yeah. And, and a it, lot of synth yeah. scores. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even some bigger action films have definitely borrowed from them. You listen to enough directors, you start hearing that they reference that movie. Mm -hmm. So I think Drive has actually been quite an influential film. And that's a movie I saw in the theaters without having seen any trailer. And then I ended up going back to the theaters a couple times just because I loved it so much. So, yeah, I would, uh, I, if I had a list, Drive would be my personal number one, and I know a lot of people wouldn't say that. In terms of, con I feel like, you're like, yeah, we gotta put a comic book movie on here. Yeah. I think be the reasoning for putting Endgame on here makes a lot of sense. I think out of the 2010s, in terms of comic book movies, I think Logan is the better choice. The cinematic universe equivalent in terms of, like, influence, and for something that makes for a totally unique theater going experience, what the cinematic universe has done with the MCU, yeah, uh, Endgame for sure. But I think Logan's a just a better picture. <laughs> well, and Logan can stand, like you can watch Logan on its own without having to uh, mine a whole bunch of other content. Like Endgame is terrific and it is everything that they set it to be here, yeah. but it does rely on a bunch of other movies. You can't just watch it out of sequence. So it is an achievement, but brass tacks talking about what film can I put on that's just gonna be a great film wall to wall yeah. and can stand on its own legs. Yeah, Logan is probably the more solid. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also nichier, you know, it's like it's a it's a western, it's a bit of a left turn, so it's you know uh, I love that film though. It's terrific. Yeah, it is a terrific movie. Do you love the Logan? Everything's just a matter of taste, you know? Like Whiplash, I think, is one of the best movies of the decade. Whiplash. Hands down. I thought Ex Machina was terrific. Ex Machina is another great one. Oh. Um hey. La La Land. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're gonna get a lot of friends on this video. Yeah. La La Land swept me up. Hey, man. I've watched it months before it got popular. Somebody <laughs> le released a 10 of the decade list just the past week or so, and uh, it had La La Land and the artist at the top. Oh, hell yeah. So there you go. Somebody's on your team. <laughs> <laughs> My kind of list right there. There you go. <laughs> All that Hollywood love. Let's just get old Hollywood movies. I don't think comedies get enough recognition. We we always go for the weight ones. Like, none of these are comedies. No. 
I think The Nice Guys is one of the most. My whole list is a bunch of Ryan Gosling movies. It's a yeah. bunch of enjoyable <laughs> Ryan Gosling flicks. I love The Nice Guys, though. I, I would I would go to bat for that one. I've seen that movie a few times, and every time I watch it, I'm impressed by how clever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and just how tight and well-assembled, you know? Yeah. This is why we didn't make a list. Yeah, because we would just start talking about all the good movies of the decade. <laughs> That's the problem, is, is, is narrowing down a decade to ten movies, you're in Snubsville. Yeah. You're going to snub a bunch of things that are worth putting on a list. <laughs> yeah, and plus my opinion changes upon like rewatching stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. Like if I didn't rewatch Logan a months after Endgame, I might have just said Endgame is definitely the one that deserves to be on it because I rewatched Logan. I'm like, nah, but Logan's the one with like the great heart, like the weight, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'd have gone to bat for Black Klansmen just because, again, out of this list, sure. clearly they wanted to choose stuff that was also relevant as well as just quality. And that movie mm. just continues to be relevant and has so much life and craft to it. Yeah. Like, I feel like you can approach that movie from every angle and it's pretty great. I think Hereditary is, from rewatching it not long ago, I I think that is a master class in execution. It is exceptionally edited, scored, conceived, uh, written, tone, <laughs> beautiful. It's a very unique experience. I still prefer Baba Duke. They're very similar in a lot of ways, yeah. and very different in a lot of yeah. ways. But there's a lot of threads that that I do think are similar. But I personally found Baba Duke to be more. That's just that's what I mean. That just hits my heart more. Yeah, and it explores its supernatural elements in a different and yeah. a more integrated fashion. Hereditary, yeah, I could, I can't really argue with it, but I would sooner put on the Baba Duke. I, I connect to that movie more. Yeah. Although, yeah, I just I, like Hereditary is a movie you step back from, and you're just like, wow, respect. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I'm glad that they put Inception for the fact that it's a sci-fi film and Arrival as well. Yeah. Arrival's a very hard one to contend with. Mm -hmm. I feel like X. Machina probably had more of an impact though in terms of film culture. Mm -hmm. I feel like Arrival was the bigger film. Yeah. But, but we got the meme of Oscar Isaac dancing from <laughs> Ex Machina. Come on, Caleb! Denis Villeneuve, he is a staple of a director, and I'm, I wish they kind of honed in on that a little bit. Yeah, know? the fact that he has had like a bunch, like this was his decade the in a lot of ways. Freaking Sicario, Prisoners, Prisoners Blade, Blade Runner, Runner 2049, <laughs> Arrival. Yeah, Arrival. And now Dune, yeah. which is like unfilmable. The only one I didn't see, what, what was it called? Enemy, the one with Jake Gyllenhaal. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that one, but the other ones I've seen are, they're in incredible films. Speaking of Gyllenhaal too, Nightcrawler would have been Nightcrawler would have been a damn good one. And Honor. another relevant movie with yeah. a lot of social bleak context. Speaking of relevant, revenant. Oh, hey. Leo suffering <laughs> for the art. <laughs> There's not very many suffering pieces. I feel like he got off easy in the Wolf Yeah, of what Street. the fuck? All he had to do was crawl on his face a few times. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can go on and on. I respect the list. At the time of filming this, I got 12K likes and 4K dislikes. I think it's a decent list. Like, uh, weirdly, Social Don't Network was mad, a bit of guys. a... <laughs> I thought it was a decent list. All these are deserving, and it's... if anything, I was just like, huh, when we got to number one. <laughs> it's, who cares? It's yeah. just, it's someone's list. How dare you not feature this when you think they're the pinnacle of lists right here? <laughs> Assemble a 10 based on 10 years worth of movies, and, and I defy yeah. you to make one that doesn't leave something deserving yeah. off that list. <laughs> it's just not possible. It's impossible. Social Network is not a film I've ever even cared to rewatch. I respect the reasoning for it. For the relevancy. Especially that whole thing about how it's timely and timeless. Like, that's and very accurate. Yeah, that's very... With that movie? Yeah, that's true. And it proved that at the time. What, everyone, when it was coming out, was like, really? We're making the Facebook movie already? And then, sure enough, it came out. It was relevant. It was a quality film. And yeah. aspects of that movie have still stuck around, so... The original title of it was supposed to be called the Facebook. Oh, good. I mean, that would have been perfect brand recognition. The Book of Faces. The Book of Face. <laughs> and then it's just the Necronomicon. <laughs> Where is the Evil Dead remake? That was the number one horror movie of the 2010s on... And it's nowhere on this list. Alright, guys. Well, what are your top ten favorite movies of the last decade? Do you have some? Go ahead. Leave them in the comments. Chappie. You guys can subscribe to District... No, no, that was like 2009. That was 2009, I yeah. think, yeah. Hey!
why don't you do that thing where you subscribe and click bells? <laughs> yeah. E Eric, thanks a lot, buddy. I hope you're having a great new year. I hope you're not getting too hammered. I hope you're not somewhere in the back alley shooting up. Taking or pills. sucking off or something. Glorying a hole. But if that's what brings you joy in 2020, you do that. Mm -hmm. Welcome the new decade in with a hard bang. Ha ha. Ha. I'm going to get an Eric Horseman tattoo on my bicep. And then we can mush them together in an alleyway somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Arm wrestle. Okay. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Put that on a shirt. <laughs>